Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Counselor Advocacy for the Jewish University Experience Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to go through a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. First, you can use the Q&A button to type your questions to our presenters at any time. I recommend using that button um, throughout the 45 minutes we have today. Reminder that your camera and your microphone are off, so the only way our panelists can, uh, you can ask your questions to the panelists is using that Q&A button. And a reminder that these sessions are being recorded and will be made available within the next few days at strivescan.com slash Jewish Student Fair. Again, that is strivescan.com slash Jewish Student Fair. So without any further ado, um, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter. We do have a little change in the schedule, so you will first be hearing from Temple University. Hey, everybody. Uh, nice to meet everybody. This is Sean Abbott. I'm the Vice Provost for Admissions, Financial Aid, and Enrollment Management at Temple University. For those of you that are unfamiliar with where Temple is located, we are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we're just a few neighborhoods away from the University of Pennsylvania and Drexel University, which are the two other um, major research universities that we share the city of Philadelphia with. Um, for those of you that haven't been to Philadelphia in a while or you've never visited before, one of the things that I like people to know about Philly is that it is a lot like Boston in the sense that it's a major city, but it feels a lot more like a college town given the number of colleges and universities in the city. In addition to the three that I just mentioned in the city itself, you have roughly about 50 colleges and 50 square miles in greater Philadelphia. You have major research universities, you have specialty institutions, you have small liberal arts colleges like Bryn Mawr and Haverford and Swarthmore. It's a great place to be a college student and um, I hope you come to visit. A couple of things that I would want you to be aware of is that we're um, a university that was initially founded as a, a night school for working adults back in the late 1800s. And we have grown to become one of the largest universities in the United States, where there are roughly only about 30 universities that are larger. We have about 40,000 students that study within 17 different schools and colleges. We have hundreds of academic programs that are within these individual schools and colleges that range from the Fox School of Business to the Klein College of Media and Communication to the Tyler School of Art and Architecture. Um, we're arguably one of the more ethnically diverse college universities you might be thinking of. Uh, roughly half of our students self-identify as students of color. About 30% of our students are their first in the family, are, are expected to be the first in their family to graduate from college. A um, couple of other things that I like people to know about Temple is that we're probably one of the few urban universities that you might be thinking about that actually has a Division I athletic program. We offer roughly about a dozen different sports that compete at the Division I level. We compete in the American Athletic Conference with other universities that are also in metropolitan regions, places like Tulane, the University of Houston. Um, really exciting place to be, and it's sort of unusual that we have a Division I athletic program being in the middle of the city. A um, couple of other things I like people to know about Temple is that we um, are a university that is obviously in the city of Philadelphia, but we're also a university that has a campus just outside the city in Ambler, Pennsylvania. So if you're looking for a more suburban collegiate experience, we have that option. And we have two international campuses. We have one of the oldest study abroad programs at Temple Rome, which is obviously in Rome, Italy. And we have the oldest American university degree presence in Japan in the form of Temple Japan, which is in Tokyo. Um, and then the last thing that I'll, well, the last two things that I'll mention about Temple that I, I like people to know is that we're probably among the more affordable universities you might be thinking of that are not your public universities within your state. Um, total cost of attendance for a student who is not from the state of Pennsylvania will be roughly about $40,000, which I think is, is something that you might want to think about as you're comparing Temple to other private and public college universities. And then the very last thing that I'll mention that is my favorite thing about Temple is that we have a stunning collection of accomplished alumni in every imaginable discipline. Um, the people that have graduated from Temple are just some incredible 
incredibly accomplished alumni around the world, everyone from the first female president of Princeton University, Shirley, Shirley Tillman, to Paula um, Scher, who is the goddess of graphic design, who created the logos for Citibank and um, Tiffany and Company. She works out of a firm on Madison Avenue in New York City. Um, Kevin Nagandi on ESPN. And personally, my favorite, a student who came to Temple as a transfer student from Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, his name is Thomas Wesley Pence, and he is better known as the billionaire earning DJ, DJ Diplo. And with that, I think I will turn things over to my colleagues. Great. Thank you so much. And next we will hear from Clark University. Great, thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Lydia Mann and I'm the Director of Admissions Outreach at Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, some really basic things to know about Clark, we're about 2,200 undergraduate students, about 800 graduate students on our campus. So we are one of the smallest research universities in the United States. We have a strong liberal arts focus, which I'll talk about in a, in a minute. Uh, students come from 40 some odd states around the country. 13% of our students are international students coming from over 50 different countries around the world. Uh, about 29% of our students identify as domestic students of color. An average class size at Clark is 20 with a 10 to one faculty to student ratio or student to faculty ratio, I should say. Uh, there are 17 NCAA Division III teams at Clark, over 130 clubs and organizations, and zero fraternities or sororities by design. Um, I said we're a research university, so what's been researched at Clark? Really exciting things. Uh, wind chill, birth control, and modern rocketry were all discovered at Clark. Um, we're in the city of Worcester, which is really, really, truly our home, and we use Worcester as a place to live, uh, as well as a place to learn. Um, we also have two schools in addition to just being part of the university. We have the School of Management, which is a business school fully accredited, one of about 50 in the United States. Uh, and you can come in as a business major, but you don't have to. And that school is open to you at all times. So you're not applying to a specific program. And then really new to us next year is really exciting. Um, the Becker School of Design and Technology. Becker was our neighbor college next door. Sadly, they had to close their doors this spring. So we have absorbed the number two game design program in the country, uh, which was housed under them. So if you're interested in esports and video game design and the way that game can both be a fun thing for us to escape into, but also a way to change things like healthcare um, and the way that people learn how to make businesses and all of that, uh, there's going to be some really great opportunities on campus. So our curriculum, I mentioned that it's liberal arts for most of our undergraduates. We're going to ask you to take classes in these four different pillars that you see on the screen. We call it LEAP, Liberal Education and Effective Practice. We studied our most successful graduates and figured out four components of their college experience and want to give it to all of you. Um, so the first one is get to know your faculty through a first year intensive. That's your first year seminar. You and 10 to 15 students around a table with an advisor. That advisor is, or with a teacher, that professor is your first advisor at Clark. So that person's not only gonna know you uh, socially through their office hours and taking walks on campus, but also through learning. The program of liberal studies, we want you to be left brain and right brain thinkers. We think that uh, game programmers who understand history are probably telling better stories than those who do not. Um, so the program of liberal studies is gonna to ask you to take a class in each one of those italicized uh, subjects that you see on your screen. Problems of practice courses, I mentioned that Worcester really is our home. Um, they're, they're courses where the faculty member has committed to teaching outside of the classroom, again, to prepare you for that transition after college. Um, so a high level French class might work with Senegalese refugees in Worcester through the immigration process, translating court documents, and then showing up uh, on the day of their um, immigration hearing to find out whether or not they gain citizenship. So it's really high stakes learning for really good reasons. I mean, I should mention that Worcester is a really international city. About 30% of our population are people born outside of the United States. And then the final quality that we saw many students take with them in a positive way was a culminating experience. And again, we don't wanna script your college experience for you. We just wanna offer some guidelines, um, some suggestions for best practices. So we're gonna ask you to have a capstone. It could be a senior thesis. It could be a high level course, a capstone course. It could involve an internship or a volunteer opportunity you've discovered. 
So there's lots of choices for that, what that looks like, but we just want you to be thinking at the highest possible level and be adding to research in your field before you graduate. If we were at a traditional college fair and you came up to my table and you said, what's unique about Clark? I would tell you it's our fifth year free program, our fifth year accelerated masters. I was actually a college counselor at a boarding school before coming to Clark for this job. Um, and I have only, at that boarding school, our students would apply to over 250 different colleges every year. The list of 250 was not always the same. So I've learned a lot of colleges around the country in that time. I've only seen this program at one other school in the entire United States. Um, what it allows you to do is major in whatever you'd like to major in while you're at Clark. You're gonna maintain a GPA of about a 3.4. Uh, and then in your junior year, you can pick one of the programs on your screen uh, and you can apply to get your master's degree for free right after graduation. So you would still graduate with your class, do all the pomp and circumstance, um, and then we would ask you to stay for a fifth additional year, totally tuition free. Um, many of the programs you can enter from any major, something like public administration, um, management, teaching. There's some flexibility uh, around what that might look like. A program like chemistry, you're probably going to want to study chemistry as an undergrad. And our advisors could work with you through that path. Student life, so we are residential. So you're going to live on campus for your first two years. And then after that, it is your choice. I mentioned we've got a ton of clubs on campus. Um, from uh, the science fiction people of Clark to a beekeeping club where you actually keep bees um, to improv comedy troops and acapella and all of that stuff. In terms of Jewish student life at Clark, uh, we do have Hillel based at Clark um, and Shabbat dinners every Friday night, a fully kosher kitchen included with your meal plan, Jewish studies concentration. Um, and Hillel estimates about 350 to 400 of our students identify as Jewish. So with that, I will turn it over and say thank you. Great, thank you so much. And next we will hear from Macaulay Honors College at CUNY. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to meet all of you. My name is Marianne Bufaltainen. I'm Director of Enrollment Management at Macaulay Honors at the City University of New York. Most of you are probably familiar with CUNY, but just in case you aren't, it is a large university system. It's actually considered to be the largest urban university system. There are 25 different colleges and programs. Macaulay Honors College is available at eight of those senior campuses. And so our students actually have a dual identity. They're part of Macaulay, but at the same time, they're part of one of the home campuses. The home campuses include Baruch, Brooklyn College, City, of, City College of New York, Queens College, Hunter College, the College of Staten Island, Lehman, and John Jay. So our students actually take the majority of their classwork at their home campus, and they also have all the rights and responsibilities of being a Macaulay student. So let's say, for example, I'm a Macaulay Honors College student at the College of Staten Island. I will take all of my classes. I can major in whatever is offered at um, the College of Staten Island. When you consider the majors all together at the eight campuses, we have 475 majors from which you can choose. Many of our Macaulay students love to double major and minor. I've run into some of our students and asked them, what are you studying? And they say, I'm majoring in this, I'm majoring in that. I have this minor, I'm thinking about another minor. And my question always is, when do you sleep, my friend? So um, let's say I'm at the College of Staten Island and I have... Um, all my classes at Staten Island, I can participate in their 100 plus clubs and activities. I can actually stay in their dorm if I wanted to. And in addition to that, I'm part of Macaulay. We have a beautiful um, brownstone building on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, very close to Central Park. It takes about three minutes to get to Central Park from our building. And students can participate in all the activities at Macaulay, which would include about 50 self-initiated and student-initiated clubs and organizations. So when you're thinking about Macaulay, it's very important to remember the mission of Macaulay. Uh, it is an honors college. It is a selective honors college. And our mission is to develop leaders who will solve some of the, cha some of the challenges of the city, the nation, and the world. And we start with New York City. That is our um, backyard. That is our laboratory. That is the place where our students have lots of fun. You may want to think about... Um, how do we select students? And it is a very small program currently. We have about 2,000 students, and that's 2,000 students over the range of the eight different campuses. So when we're looking to select students, we're looking at students who have academic promise, who have high academic grades. We're also looking for students who are intellectually curious, who understand our mission, who are devoted to New York City, the nation, and the world. Um, excuse me. 
who are highly motivated and who are creative. And very importantly, we're also looking for students who are well-rounded. The benefits of Macaulay are many. We offer many benefits as well as support to our students. First, I would like to mention that you will be with like-minded students, very intellectually curious students. Um, you also would have the opportunity of receiving an opportunity fund grant. These range from $1,500 to $5,000. The 1,500 is guaranteed. It is to be used for research or um, it's to be used for a research, internships, um, and study abroad. Our students have been on every single continent, which we're very excited about, including Antarctica. In addition to that, our students actually have the opportunity of working very closely with academic advisors. This is a personalized academic advisement system. So I would like to also mention that we provide a cultural passport for our students that gives them free and reduced admission to various cultural events and museums within New York City. Remember what I had mentioned earlier in regards to um, New York City being our playground and our laboratory. In addition to that, um, our students receive a laptop by junior year. It becomes theirs for free as long as they pay $1 to New York State. They also will receive a tuition scholarship. So for students who are New York State residents or for students who are actually attending New York State high schools who meet certain specific requirements, we will provide a full tuition scholarship minus any financial aid which you might receive. Our tuition is very affordable, as you probably know, being a public institution for a New York State resident, our tuition at this time is $7,000. We will provide you with the tuition scholarship based on um, how much financial aid you receive will make up the difference. If you don't receive any financial aid, we will certainly um, still give you the full scholarship. We do have a vibrant student Jewish student life across our eight campuses. Many of our students actually uh, become friends with Jewish students and Hillel organizations at other institutions within the city. And I would like to mention that many of our um, students who are accepted to Macaulay are very interested in taking um, classes in Israel. And um, we certainly do offer deferments for students taking either religious or cultural, um, I guess a study abroad or a one year deferment or one year gap year. So we, were very, we welcome all students to apply to Macaulay and we certainly look forward to seeing your application. Now, the last thing I'm going to mention is um, please try to attend some more virtual events. The next event that we have is going to be on the 26th of May, which is this Wednesday. And you can certainly see all the information about our events coming up um, on our website, macaulay.cumi.edu. And I think I'm right at my six minutes and I wish you all the very best and look forward to responding to your questions. Great, thank you so much. And next we will hear from Trinity College. Okay, well, good afternoon. My name is Anthony Berry. I'm Director of Admissions at Trinity College and I'm joined by co-facilitator Lisa Cassow, our Hillel Director. We are going to together uh, share information about Trinity and in the second half of this presentation, Lisa will talk a bit more about Jewish life on campus. Starting with general information about the college. Uh, as a selective liberal arts college located in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, our students and, and families that are looking at Trinity are definitely interested in an environment where there's a fairly small population. So we have roughly 2,100 students at the undergraduate level. That's a great size for us and we don't have any plans anytime soon to expand beyond that. If you're interested in additional statistics, uh, we have a nine to one student faculty ratio, which does make it easier for our students to easily engage with both faculty and get to know their peers as well. Geographic diversity is also one of our institutional priorities. So currently we have 48 states represented as well as 71 countries. History is also important to us. Trinity has been around for a while. Uh, we will be celebrating our bicentennial in just a couple years. And so being, around, being that we've been around since 1823, there's quite a bit to celebrate and to honor. And so we certainly look forward to having the entire campus community being involved. Academically, you may not know exactly what you wanna pursue at this point, and that would be fine at a place like Trinity where you don't have to declare 
your major until the end of their, your sophomore year. With that said, we do have a couple of special programs that you aren't likely to see at many other liberal arts colleges, including engineering, which has been at Trinity for over a hundred years and a human rights program, which actually is one of the first of its kind in the nation. In terms of what sets us apart, um, I would really have to focus on the location yet again. Um, for our students, the learning certainly begins in the classroom, um, but so much of it happens outside the classroom in the city of Hartford. At this point, we have over 200 academic internships and we formed some really interesting partnerships uh, with some of our corporate partners, particularly Infosys, which as it shares here is a global leader in consulting, technology and next generation services. For those of you who are really interested in doing research in the city, we have uh, SHARE, which is the Center for Hartford Engagement and Research. Our students are doing research both during the academic year as well as during the summer. Now, in terms of admissions and financial aid, I'm gonna give you some advice early on. Um, admissions counselors are people too, and so don't be afraid to ask us questions as you continue through your college search. For admissions, um, you should know that we have been test optional since 2015. And at this point, most of our applicants at this point do not actually submit testing. With that said, we will look even more closely at your high school transcript, uh, taking a close look to see what sort of courses you've chosen. And for us, it's really important to see that you've chosen some of the most challenging courses available at your school. Most applicants as well will have at least uh, an A minus average and pretty consistent also throughout their four years. In terms of financial aid, I'm happy to share that we are still able to meet 100% of demonstrated need once students submit both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. And we will certainly consider all students for merit aid as well. At this point, we were, we're going to transition to Jewish life at Trinity and I'm gonna hand it over to Lisa who will share some highlights about Jewish life. Hi, hi everybody, I'm Lisa Casso and I'm the Hillel Director at Trinity. Uh, we have a very robust group of students from all over the country. Um, and uh, Trinity is also a, a campus where there is Greek life. So there is AE Pi on Trinity's campus. It's a very nice group of guys. Um, we're a well-staffed and well-resourced Hillel and Jewish life at Trinity is, uh, is very highly supported by the college. We have two full-time uh, staff members, um, me as the, as the director and an assistant director. We have a beautiful facility uh, and uh, we have kosher dining um, integrated into the main dining hall, internships throughout the local Jewish community. And in terms of Israel experience, uh, not only does uh, the college allow students to study away or study abroad for a year. Um, in Israel, there are five approved programs and uh, students who have particular interests, say for instance, in um, the environment and ecology and land resources, water resources, can make special uh, petitions to the study away office and uh, be approved to study in, in Israel. Um, can we go on? Um, we also have, in terms of pictures, we also have um, a major in uh, Jewish studies and uh, a minor in Jewish studies uh, and a minor in Hebrew. Um, uh, we have uh, wonderful uh, programs throughout the year. Every Shabbat is celebrated on campus often with um, other organizations, co-sponsored or um, co-sponsored theme Shabbatot uh, are very common at Trinity. Um, and as I said, well, well integrated into the, into the uh, campus tapestry of, of, um, of, of life. Uh, I'm sorry, I do need to cut you guys off to move on to our next presenter. I apologize, um, but six minutes is up. So I will take the time now to introduce our next and last presenter for today's session, the University of Chicago. 
All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I do want to say we've got uh, one of our current students, EJ, um, who is happy to answer any questions about UC Chicago in the chat as well. So feel free uh, for any of those student life questions. But to get started, um, I do find it helpful in some of these shorter presentations to think about just the four C's with you, Chicago. Core, uh, career advancement, campus, and Chicago. So the core is the most distinct part of our education. We're a liberal arts college in the heart of a major research university. So we really wanna make sure that students are focusing in the breadth of topics, um, in addition to what they'll eventually major in. We do focus in on small discussion-based courses taught through Socratic seminars. So it's all about talking with your peers, learning from those around you. And why this core is also distinct is while there are those eight different disciplines that every student will take courses in uh, by the time they graduate at U Chicago, there's no one course that every student must take in order to graduate U Chicago, and they can be spread out throughout your four years. So they sort of help to serve as maybe foundational courses, um, helping students go a little bit outside their comfort zone, but always be in charge of their own education. Some examples. There are thinking of for the physical science. Of course, if you are a STEM student, you can be taking physics, right? You can be taking calculus, the prerequisites before you go into more advanced courses. But if the thought of taking another uh, theoretical physics class after high school is not really what you're looking for, don't worry. You can take courses like natural hazards, like global warming, looking at the real world applications of physical science and making it a little bit more accessible. You can also satisfy uh, pretty much any section of the core, uh, except for humanities, as that is a first year course abroad. So there's a lot of flexibility and again, making it your own. Career advancement, why I mentioned it here, we actually offer more paid internships for our students alone to apply to than pretty much any school in the nation. These are fully funded internships um, for you Chicago students that are global during the year. They are usually in our city of Chicago, but over the summer, they could really be anywhere. And there are substantial internships specifically to make sure the students are getting that on the ground experience. Um, so it's a really great way to dive into a field uh, that you, want to be exploring before graduation um, and having that again accessible from your first year, as well as being part of a major research university. There's actually more research than undergraduates who are interested in doing it, um, working in those physics laboratories that help prove Einstein's theory of gravitational waves and black holes on our campus, but also working with history professors as they're writing books, doing research in the arts, in music, in English, really every one of our fields and uh, people are doing research and undergraduates can get involved. Um, as for our community on our campus, we're located in Hyde Park, about 20 minutes out of the heart of downtown Chicago. What that really means for students is we have the best of both worlds, a beautiful campus with the rest of the city right there. On our campus, um, Students are first, their first community is our housing communities. All first and second years live in housing, but it is available all four years. Houses are smaller subsets of the university as a whole. So there's no major based housing. There's no interest based housing. All houses are meant to be as diverse as the rest of the university surrounding it with students coming from all 50 states, from more than 100 countries, from all different backgrounds having those conversations in housing that they're having in the classroom, while also then having house trips, having uh, subsidies to uh, have study breaks in your house uh, with you know, free food. Every college student loves some free food. Uh, while then also having the rest of the campus community with more than 450 registered student organizations, ranging from spiritual organizations, of course, our uh, campus Hillel and Chabad are uh, very popular for students to get involved with, also hosting their own study breaks, while also having, you know, your classic arts, your sports, but then things like the zombie readiness defense task force, where students, you know, are always preparing in case of the inevitable zombie apocalypse. So making sure that students can get those outlets however they really want them. Um, another quick note sort of on that Jewish life on our campus, um, all three of our dining halls do have kosher uh, stations uh, for students to make sure that if you're keeping kosher, you have those uh, uh, that available at whatever dining hall you do choose to go to. And of course, one of our major traditions that I really like to uh, make sure people know about is the Lot Kahamantosh debate, where every year, um, our faculty will debate on which is the superior food, latkes or hamantaschen. Uh, these are often Nobel Prize winning uh, professors who are using whatever discipline they uh, are part of to debate this uh, very important question. It's going into, I think it's 76th or 77th year. Uh, so it's definitely a time honored tradition for us here. I do quickly wanna talk about what that application process looks like for us. We are also going into, I believe our fourth year as a test optional institution we do plan to consider this for all future cycles, so definitely don't worry about it.
that. Um, and then we're really known for our uncommon que essay questions um, where students are asked kind of out of the box questions uh, to see how you think. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer. I would just tell you to engage, have fun and take a risk. Why not? Um, Finally, with financial aid, we do pledge to meet 100% of demonstrated need in grants for any student who applies for financial aid and is admitted to the university. Um, so you, we uh, don't package any loans. It is all grant-based. Um, it's also free to apply to UChicago if you indicate on the application that you intend to apply for financial aid. Uh, and that's just using the uh, FAFSA. And then uh, we have our own worksheet that is a lot more concise than the CSS profile and it's free. So I think I am coming to the end of my time. Again, I will say we have our current student EJ here. who's happy to answer any questions you all may have in the Q&A, um, but you can also find more information on our website. Great, thank you everyone. Um, I know we were supposed to hear from the University of Wisconsin-Madison today. Unfortunately, they were not able to make it. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to invite all of our panelists back on cam if they so if they don't mind. Um, I'm going to pose up to three questions, time depending, um, but to our panelists so they get to talk a little bit more about their institutions and just talk a little bit more about the college search process, give them a little bit more screen time as well. Um, we're going to go in the same order, same presentation order, and I'm going to allow everyone about 30 seconds to reply. Um, so without with that being said, I'm going to go open up the floor to our first question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start up at the top at Temp with Temple University. So I'm gonna assume that most of the students and families that we're getting to meet today or that are getting to hear from us are just starting to search for a college university and might be sophomores and juniors. And I would say, you know, one of the strongest pieces of advice I would have for a family that's just starting this process is to ensure that as you start to build the list of college universities that you're starting to think about that you'll ultimately apply to during your senior year, that you have some affordable options on that list. Um, there are going to be some universities that are incredibly generous, places like Trinity, places like the University of Chicago that you just heard from that will guarantee to meet your full demonstrated need if you're admitted. Um, but I wouldn't say that's the sweeping majority of college universities in America. So I always think it's really important to identify at least one or two options that you could safely assume that you could afford to attend those institutions, even without incredibly generous to need-based financial aid that you might find at a place like Trinity um, or Chicago. So um, that would be my strongest piece of advice, just really thinking about identifying a, a, a small collection of institutions that you know you could afford, um, regardless of whatever financial aid you might receive. Thank you, Sean. Uh, sorry, guys, just a reminder, a 30 second response, please, so everyone can get the same screen time. Um, but next, we'll go to Clark University. Sure. Um, so my piece of advice changes depending on the day. Uh, today, I think I want to leave you with the idea that we talk a lot about fit in college admissions, um, but when you're imagining fit in college, you get to imagine yourself four years out. So I don't need you to find the perfect fit for you as a sophomore or the perfect fit for you as a junior. I need you to spend some time thinking about who you want to develop into being. And that is academically, but it's also socially. And then you need to take that fit and apply it to, okay, what are my admissions chances at certain schools? Um, but you get to imagine a new version of you if you want, and that's pretty exciting. Great, thanks. Uh, next, uh, Macaulay Honors College. That's a very hard act to follow. I love that. Um, thank you for that information. Um, I think what's very important is to do your due diligence in terms of research. I think that's already been mentioned. Obviously, the affordability option is very, very important. I also would be thinking about, can you see yourself attending this particular institution? And in our case, you will have to choose um, one or two Macaulay choices from the eight. So our research really encompasses learning more about Macaulay, more, learning more about CUNY, and certainly choosing one of the two, choosing one or two options specifically for Macaulay. Great, thank you. Next, uh, Trinity College. Thank you. Yeah, lots of great advice. I think uh, what I'll share is to really focus on the things that you can control. I think in this process, we, um, we find ourselves or people find themselves uh, trying to maybe be something that 
others may want them to be. But for you, it's, you know, you have to consider that so much of your academic and social life by the time you apply uh, will have passed. And so you've already done so much of the work. And so I, I would just ask that um, you really just focus on having a, an amazing senior year, enjoying your experience and realizing that you are actually in the front seat. Great. And lastly, University of Chicago. Um, I would say specificity is really important. Um, you're going to be writing a lot of essays. Uh, probably, you know, a lot of schools have supplemental essays. Make sure you are answering the question that was asked and not the question that you wish we had asked instead, right? And I know it can be tempting to just sort of make a base template and copy and paste school to school. Do not do that when we're asking why you Chicago, right? I didn't ask why you wanna to go to college, I asked why here. So always make sure that you are answering the very specific question that was asked. Great, all great pieces of advice there. So now let's change it up, do something a little bit more fun, learn a little bit more about the schools or all our institutions here. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And again, we will start up at the top with Temple University. Uh, my favorite tradition is it's, uh, I would say, Saturdays in the fall when our, our football team competes. We, I think, have the unusual distinction of being one of the, I think there might be one or two other universities, but our, our football team actually competes in a, an NFL professional stadium where the Philadelphia Eagles compete. So every Saturday that we have a home football game, there's this kind of like mass exodus right behind me outside the main gates of Temple, which is on Broad Street, and students and families and parents and alums and faculty board the Broad Street uh, train down to where the football stadium is and tailgate and attend a football game against the backdrop of a Philadelphia, the Philadelphia skylight. Next, Clark University. Sure, so I love um, International Student Gala, which happens every winter. Um, in the first winter I went, I was expecting sort of a, an equivalent to a high school talent show. I knew that it had to do with music from all over the globe and that students dance. I got a full on uh, Broadway style production. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, costumes every year, incredible lighting. They totally transformed the gym. And it really is a celebration of uh, cultures from all over the world. And I think it's a celebration of Clark students wanting to learn about new cultures um, and try new things. and. Um, a ton of our student body participates, hundreds. Awesome, sounds fun. Next, Macaulay Honors College. There are so many things I could say, and I don't think I'll be able to fit them all into 30 seconds. Um, prior to finals, we have a special wellness day for our students to try to lessen some of the anxiety. So we bring in um, pets. So we have cats, we've even had rabbits, we've had dogs. We also have meditation, we have yoga, we have arts and crafts. During this pandemic, we couldn't really have students in our building. So we had um, bring your own pet. So this is all done uh, on a virtual basis. Of course, the yoga and meditation is a little bit easier to do. There are other events, but I think this one really talks about how much we support our students and how much we care about them and how we want to wish them all the best for their finals. Great. Next, Trinity College. So this one is easy for me. Uh, my uh, favorite event is Pink Shabbat for breast cancer awareness going on its 15th year. At Trinity, uh, we really believe in the individual and give resources to um, and, and support to students who want to create something very special. And Pink Shabbat was created by a student 15 years ago who is now going to become the chair of the Hillel Advisory Board. Um, and it's a beautiful event that involves many organizations on campus. Great, and lastly, University of Chicago. I think one of the most popular ones is probably Dollar Shape Wednesday, uh, which it truly just is. Every Wednesday on campus, you can get a milkshake for a dollar in one of our campus cafes. Uh, this is a long running tra uh, tradition that I think my favorite fun fact about it is when the original cafe was closed and you know it was uh, Einstein Bros at one point, it's now a Pret. Um, they always put in the contract that they need to, we still need to be selling dollar shakes on Wednesdays. So I think that's just a fun one. Awesome. 
Uh, and I think we'll have time for one more, not so much a question, but just a cool opportunity to again, talk about your school. So let's go with, uh, give an interesting or fun fact about your school. So we will start up again with Temple University. I'd say a fun fact would be the two cultural institutions that kind of bookend Temple's campus to the north and the south. To the north, you have Temple University Hospital, which is the really the city's public hospital. We're the only major city in America that doesn't have a city hospital, so we're that hospital. And then the institution to the south of campus is actually Rodep Shalom, which is the oldest Ashkenazi synagogue in the, not only in the United States, but in the Western Hemisphere, founded back in 1795. Awesome. Uh, next, Clark University. Sure, so I didn't talk about our founding, but we were actually founded as a graduate school in psychology um, before turning to undergrad. We were founded in 1887. Um, and we were the only place in the United States where Sigmund Freud ever came and spoke. Um, he famously got sick, returned uh, home and never spoke anywhere else again. Um, but we now have a statue of Sigmund Freud on the center of our campus. It gets decorated, photographed. People have fun with it regularly. Very fun. Very fun. Uh, next, Macaulay Honors College. We have four seminars that all of our Macaulay students are required to take. And they're all centered on New York City and they're all experiential in nature. And so one of the ones that I think is probably the most interesting is what we call our um, bio book. This is for our science and technology or science forward um, intercampus particular course. And our students participate in this BioBliss, which is a 24 hour inventory of plant and animal species in a specific park in New York City. Very cool. Uh, next, Trinity College. So a, an interesting fact about Trinity is that um, uh, uh, Professor um, Susanna Heschel, uh, who is the daughter of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, graduated from Trinity. And um, in that fantastic tr tradition, uh, we've established a Hillel Leadership Scholarship of $20,000 a year for a um, renewable for four years uh, for a special student um, who uh, has academic promise and leadership uh, experience. And lastly, we will hear from the University of Chicago. Uh, yeah, so U Chicago uh, was actually a founding member of the Big Ten Football League. Uh, and the first Heisman Trophy ever awarded was awarded to Jay Berwanger, uh, who was a U Chicago football player. We are no longer a member of the Big Ten Football League, but I think that's a fun little tidbit of history that people don't usually know off the top of their heads. Awesome. So a lot of great facts there and some good opportunity to learn more about all, each institution here today. So that is all the time we have. I do want to thank everyone for joining us, our panelists, as well as our attendees. You know, it's a Sunday, so we really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, be with us today. For our attendees, when you close out of here, there'll be a quick four question survey. If you wouldn't mind filling that out, we'd really appreciate it. Um, it allows us to hear feedback and always make improvements on our events. So we'd appreciate you taking the time to fill that out. And a reminder that this session, as well as all of the sessions today, were recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Jewish Student Fair. Again, that's strivescan.com slash Jewish Student Fair, and the recordings will be available there in the next few days. So I want to thank everyone again and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.